Hello listeners, welcome to Crack the Wellness Code podcast, a space where we discuss all things health and wellness. This podcast aims to educate, inspire, empower and impact thereby leaving you feeling uplifted. Happy listening. Cancer is a disease of western lifestyle or the wealthy. The principal difference between populations with the highest and the lowest rates of cancer is what they eat, is their food. The risk of breast and colon cancer can be halved by just decreasing the meat intake. This is per the Environmental Working Group. You can go to ewg.org and look at their website for the Dirty Dozen. Dirty Dozen is the list of fruits and vegetables that have the highest residues of pesticides. What are the best cuisines? Well, everybody knows about Mediterranean cuisine. It's good for diabetes. It's good for heart disease. It's also good for cancer because uh, it incorporates a lot of fruits and vegetables and uh, whole grains and olive oil, which has a lot of bioactive polyphenols. How about Indian diet? Indian diet actually can be very, very good because we have excellent spices that have anti-cancer activities. We have dal or lentils that have fiber, which feed the good uh, microbiome in our gut. And it also has um, um, many beneficial polyphenols. However, we should then avoid pakoras and samosas and gulab jamuns and also high glycemic foods like white rice and choose a lower variety of glycemic rice like basmati rice. So there was a study, very large study done by Loma Linda University that was called Adventist Study 2, Health Study 2. And this compared the food habits of uh, the Seventh-day Adventists. So when compared to non-vegetarians, when compared to non-vegetarians, the lacto-ovo vegetarians had less gastrointestinal cancer, that is stomach, colon, pancreas, etc., esophagus. But the vegans who didn't eat any animal protein had the overall lower incidence of cancer and female type cancers. How, what spots different anti-cancer foods act? If you look at cruciferous foods, which we will talk about later, they act against multiple steps in the genesis and progression of cancer. It detoxifies the toxins. It uh, causes cancer cell death to commit suicide. It prevents their blood supply. If you take green tea, they, it does the same. If you take citrus fruits, citrus fruits are the commonest fruits eaten worldwide. You have pomelos, tangerines, uh, oranges, lemons, etc. So citrus fruits act at every step. Turmeric is powerfully anti-inflammatory and also has other acts, actions. So some specific cancer foods, anti-cancer food, mushrooms. Mushrooms have what is called aromatase inhibitors, which is actually uh, used for treatment of breast cancer. It slows and stops cancer cell growth, increases the immune activity, and uh, mushrooms are shown to protect against breast cancer. Berries, elagic acid is in um, raspberries and strawberries. It blocks angiogenesis. It is an antioxidant, and it also prevents genetic mutation. Elagic acid is also found in walnuts and pomegranates. We talked about um, are the, the berries and uh, citric fruits. However, pomegranates are top-notch fruits, also have multiple anti-cancer activities. And it's also in all systems of um, traditional medicine from Ayurveda to Middle East to Native Americans, etc. Blueberries, one cup a week significantly decreases the risk of breast cancer, just one cup a week. When fresh berries are not available, frozen is okay. I'm going to mention amla, Indian gooseberry, because it's in our tradition and our system of medic medicine. The amla is mentioned in Ayurvedic text before 400 BC. So we know uh, how to use it. We know it's not toxic. It is in lab um, tests now in the US and it's found to be active against uh, triple negative breast cancer and lung cancer but it's in very early stage of testing, but you can eat it as food. Cruciferous vegetables is a very large category of vegetables. So I will just name some broccoli, Brussels sprouts, bok choy, cauliflower, cabbage, 
kohlrabi, kale, Swiss chard, radish. So you can have a couple every day. And they have um, the bioactive polyphenols, uh, which are um, sulfur compounds, sulforaphenes and indultory carbidols. There is an inverse relationship between how much cruciferous vegetables you consume and the risk of several cancers, breast, colon, ovary, stomach, prostate, etc. Tomatoes have lycopenes and they stop blood vessel cancer cells from growing their blood vessel. The skin has three to five times the amount that's in the flesh. And this is true of most fruits and vegetables. The skin and the outer layers have more polyphenols, so don't peel if you can. Two to three cups per week gives you a 30% decreased risk of prostate cancer. So another fruit, wonderful fruit category. This was a very large study of almost a half a million people done by NIH and was a prospective population-based study. Two stone fruits daily, stone fruits being cherry, uh, nectarine, peaches, plums, two stone fruits a day or apple. You could have apples. Decreased the risk of squamous cell esophageal cancer by 67%. So apples, what type of apples? Granny Smith and Red Delicious. Now nuts. Nuts are super because they have anti-angiogenic effects. They also uh, have omega-3, which is anti-inflammatory and boost immunity. There was a Harvard study done of patients who had stage three colon cancer. And after their surgery, when they were eating normal diet, they were started on a serving of nuts twice a week. And it showed after six years of follow-up, those that were on nut supplements, they had a decreased risk of death by 47% and increased disease-free survival of 55%. So incorporate some nuts into your diet. Okay, spices. We have, our diet is great because we have so many spices. I'll just touch on two. Turmeric. Turmeric is now actually in clinical studies uh, in the US. It, it has multiple effects against cancer. It has been shown in the lab to be in the lab to be effective against multiple cancers like brain cancer, stomach, um, prostate, ovary, lung, etc. And it's part of our food. So have it as your food. Ginger. Ginger is also excellent because a study in the University of Michigan showed that if you dropped, if you dripped ginger extract onto ovarian cancer cells, those cells died, committed suicide. The other thing is um, when people who were at high risk for colon cancer, these were people with high risk for colon cancer, given ginger daily, and after a while they had their colonoscopy done, there was less proliferation of colon cells. So. This is again our food, put ginger in your tea or in your food. So the last vegetable I'm going to touch on is garlic, the uh, family, garlic, onions, leeks, etc. It has been shown that higher intake of garlic and onions, there's a lower incidence of uh, gastrointestinal cancer. Iowa woman study was a large study comprising of postmenopausal women who were followed for 22 years. And what they found was there was a strong inverse relationship between garlic consumption and colon cancer risk. High intake of garlic is also associated with a reduction in the incidence of prostate cancer, breast and pancreatic cancer. That wraps up today's edition of Crack the Wellness Code podcast. If you want to know more about this episode and many such archive treasures, then make sure you download our CWC Kushi app, available both in app and Play Store. Thank you for listening. 